This is a new All on X digital modelless workflow using ExoCAD, OptiSplint, and Symbol Crowns. You are not limited to the generic library anymore, and today you will learn how to use any two shape. At the end of the video, you will be able to design these cases too, and I will give you the scan and ExoCAD files for free. I'm gonna go really quick through the order form because there are some different settings compared to a regular order on 4 case. For example, I'm using coping for the abutment sites. I'm gonna have a separate scan body scan, which is OptiSplin, selecting symbol, and I'm designing the ginger myself, holding the control button and selecting all the other abutment sites. For the Pontic side, it's a reduced Pontic. It's also a symbol workflow, and I'm designing the gingerbread myself. Hold the control button, select all the other Pontic sites, select the shape, save the restoration, and we're gonna go into the design. The OptiSplint system is very interesting because you've got scan flex and verification tick in once. You're gonna loot them together in the patient's mouth and scan it in your desktop scanner at the lab. You can download the libraries for free from the website, but I'm going to leave a link in the description. You have the option between desktop and into all workflows. You can choose from a variety of implant systems, and then you're going to use your regular workflow to align the scan flex in ExoCAD by clicking on a specific point, which is outlined in the library. The OptiSplint workflow is completely modelless, and once you loaded the scan flex together in the patient's mouse, you can scan it with any into all scan. Defining the emergence profile in this case is pretty easy by clicking next if the motor units are super gingerable. In the chain mode, I'm going to bring in my pre-up as a guidance. I'm going to start with the molars to align them as perfectly to the pre-up as possible. Then I'm going to move forward to the interiors. I'm going to rotate them. I'm going to bring them forward to their matching perfectly as possible. I can click Control shift r to bring the grid into the foreground and then use the tube mode to shift the midline a little bit to the right. I would use angular screw channels. I could adjust those here under the advanced tab. In free form, I'm going to try to adjust the teeth to the perfect shape. That means cutting to the gingival, adjusting the occlusion, and defining the proximal contact. Designing the gingival can be really difficult for some people, but it's actually very easy. You just have to remember you're not designing a denture. That means you have to create a basal convex profile. And when you're drawing the outer line of the gingival profile, you're going to stay two to three millimeters away from the abutment sites. After this, I'm going to move on to the free form of the gingival design. And the first thing I'm going to usually do is I'm going to bulk up the lingual just in case the tie bases are sticking out of the design. Then I'm going to smooth everything out while holding the shift key on the keyboard. And I'm going to fix the interproximal immersion profile under the anatomic tab with the small region tool. I'm not concentrating so much on the root design because I have to redefine it in a later step. The problem that we're going to run into because we haven't chosen the generic library is that when we're going to do the anatomic reduction, we're going to create tapered dies. Crowns will not fit on those. Therefore, I'm going to save my initial design as an SDL file first. I'm going to name it Preup HD in this case. Then under export mode, I'm going to load another custom tooth model. In this case, I'm going to load the generic tooth shape. The generic library allows me to create the symbol crowns that I actually need for the framework, but I want to create crowns with the HD library. So how are we going to do this? So the first thing we have to do, we have to positioning our generic library with a pre-op scan. So if we have a good alignment of the symbol crowns with the HD crowns we designed earlier. So let's quickly positioning them in the chain mode with a pre-op scan so we have a good alignment. After that, we can go to free form and adjust the occlusion, the basal, and the approximal contacts. We have to fine tune our gingival design just slightly because there's always a little bit of difference between one library and the other. I'm gonna adjust the gingival heights with a small region tool on all the teeth, and then I'm switching to the large region tool and adjusting the interproximal embrasures. If we are going to anatomic reduction now, we can see that the symbol option is available, and that's naturally because we were using the generic library. Before we build the symbol crown, we want to bring in a new pre-op scan. And the new pre-op scan is actually an old pre-op scan that we already used. It is a pre-op HD crown that we designed earlier. So we're going to import those, click on adapt, and adapting the generic library shapes to the new pre-op scan that we just imported. Usually the adapting purpose doesn't go that fast, and I did it for the purpose of the video, but then we can finally go to the anatomic reduction process and click apply to create our symbol crowns. Click OK and then we have to go one more time into the gingival design. 
And what we're trying to achieve is to overlap the symbol crowns with the gingival material so we can cut out an emergence profile out of the gingival for the crowns at a later step. Back into wizard mode, you can now design the symbol superstructure. And ExoCAD does a perfect job assigning the margins to each symbol crown. On the abutment sides, you have to fine tune them a little bit sometimes if the margin is intersecting with the screw hole. But for the most part, you can then go one last time into the gingival design mode. Where you can fine tune the gingival one last time. And what I'm going to do here is primarily focusing on the root structure. I'm going to a medium strength and medium size. And as I described in my denture videos, I'm creating a rapid Y between the T's to create a root structure. And you can make the root structure as prominent as you want. Some people like to make them very prominent. Some people like them less prominent. In the end, it's completely up to you. And you can smooth it out if it's too prominent for you. But what I like to do with a small pencil tool is redefine the gum line around the CJ. After that, you can drag down the gingival a little bit to make the CGs all at the same height. But the most important part that you must not forget is under the anatomic tab and it's called adapt to thimble crown. That will cut out the merchant's profile out of the gingival so the crowns will perfectly fit into the framework. Then we can go to the next step, which is another anatomic reduction. And unfortunately, ExoCAD doesn't let us bypass this. So we have to do the lingual reduction and the depth to zero. Alternatively, you can switch to a facial cutback or a dentin cutback if you want to layer the crowns. In this case, I am not layering and I want to stay full contour. But when we turn the framework around, we can see that ExoCAD cut the basal area perfectly to the gingival. But remember, on all on four cases, we want to create a clean, convex basal surface. But if we go to expert mode and try to find an option to freeform the basal area on the framework, we won't find any. Therefore, we have to go and merge the restoration first. Then go back into the menu and we will find the option Freeform Merged Thimble. Here under the Freeform tools, I like to select the smoothing tool. And while holding down the shift key on the keyboard, I am smoothing down the basal surface of the framework. Trying to create a convex area and trying to avoid any undercuts or any food traps. Remember, we want to create an area that the patient can easily clean. After that, the main design of the framework and the crowns is basically done. But if you take a closer look at the crowns, you will notice that they don't have any screw holes. Therefore, we're going to go now into another very important step, how to cut the screw holes into the crowns. If you're new to the channel and you like the content so far, please subscribe, hit the notification bell so you get updated on all future videos. If you already know my channel, you will know the process from former videos. What you need to do, you need to isolate the screw channels that they are only visible. Then in this case, because we're dealing with a bridge, you have to isolate only one. We have to export one by one. If you try to export all the screw channels at once and use it as a tool to cut holes into the crowns, you will notice that the operation will fail. Therefore, we have to export them one by one. Since the screw channels on number eight and nine are going right through the framework, we don't actually have to export them. So we're gonna continue with 11 and 13. Then under tools, add on remove mesh, we're gonna select generic mesh and import actually all the screw channels at once. So that we don't combine them and keep them as individual meshes. And we right click on one mesh and select edit mesh. Then we circle all of the meshes to select them all. We can also click on select all and then we're going to click close holes that will make it a solid mesh then we have to repeat the entire procedure and isolate all the screw channels and export each of them as an individual mesh you don't have to rename each screw channel and can just override the existing one since we are in true smile mode it's really hard to identify that we selected one tools therefore we need to first deactivate true smile that makes it easier to identify that we clicked on one tools and then while holding the shift key, we're gonna click on the last contour lateral molar. But now comes a really important step and many people try to do the operation in the regular design mode and wonder why it doesn't work. We actually have to merge the restoration and go to free form merging. 
From there, we're gonna go to attachment, subtract, and load from file. From there, we're gonna import the first screw channel. In this case, it's number four, and it's very important that we check rotate. Then we're gonna click on allow any changes and hit apply to activate the operation. We're gonna repeat the operation with every screw channel that requires a hole in the crown, and then we click OK, and in some instances, we notice that the screw channel didn't cut a hole in one tooth. That's because it's in the middle of two teeth. What we need to do, select one single tooth, go to freeform merging, go to subtract, this specific screw channel and complete the operation again like we did in the other teeth. Once we double check that all the holes were perfectly cut through the crowns and the framework, this will complete the design operation in this tutorial. Now we can move towards the production and nest the framework and the crowns and mill it in our 5-axis mill. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you want to download the scan files and ExoCAD design files of the case you saw in this video, leave a comment and like the video right now. I will send you the download link immediately so you can start practicing. If you want to go much more deeper into the OptiSplint design, click this video here and you will learn so much more. Until then, stay tuned.